Well, I had a request, and that was from one of my viewers that wanted to see me cook a pineapple upside down cake. Well, here a month or so ago, I think I already did that, but I don't mind doing it again. And I'm going to, since it's so hot, I'm not going to do it in the oven. I'm going to do it again on the stovetop in my pan. Now, you can use a cast iron pan if you have it. Uh, this nonstick pan is the one I'm going to use because it's just the right size for the recipe that I have. Now, if I was going to make a bigger one, then I would use my bigger cast iron pan, but this is sufficient for the recipe that I have. First of all, we're going to get our pan going. I'm going to melt, oh, about a tablespoon or so of butter. I haven't got it cut yet, or I haven't got it measured out. Roughly about a fourth of a stick of butter, I guess, would be. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the refrigerator since I don't want it to melt. Sorry about that. I bumped the tripod. Can move that over just a tiny bit so it won't do that, hopefully. Next time I have to, if I have to open the refrigerator door. Now this is what you're going to do in your pan the very first thing. You're going to melt your butter. be another hot one today. I need to start mowing, but I don't know if I'll get around to it or not. My lemonade is sure good today. And you may hear the exhaust fan running. You may hear the AC when it kicks on, but it's hot. So I've got to have my AC on and I've got to have the exhaust fan on when I have the stove going or it'll be so hot in this kitchen, I won't be able to stand it, so. Y'all just have to bear with me. Now I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of white sugar. And we're, we're just gonna kinda cook that in that butter till it caramelizes. doesn't take too long. I like doing it this way because it's no fuss. And I don't use three or four cups of flour because I don't want a great big old upside down cake. I just want to one thin layer. Now, if I was going to cook it to take somewhere else, I would make a bigger one. But since it's just me, I don't want to make that bigger cake. But you can see I'm just browning my sugar or caramelizing it a little bit in the butter. Again, that was about a tablespoon, a good heaping tablespoon of butter, a good tablespoon of white sugar, and a good heaping tablespoon of brown sugar.
One thing I'm doing differently, I didn't have sliced pineapple in my cupboard today and I didn't want to have to go run get any. So I'm using crushed pineapple. I've drained the juice off of it. The best I can. And I just simply put it in a strainer, put it over a bowl. For it to drain. And I'm going to kind of add the pineapple to it, basically like I would the um, sliced pineapple. leaving a hole in the middle to put my cherries. I don't want to know with my jar of cherries. <laughs> I thought I took them out. Maybe I didn't. I didn't. I got everything else but the cherries out. And I'm just going to put a cherry down in the hole that I made like I would if I'd have had a sliced piece of pineapple there. To my way of thinking, pineapple's pineapple. Doesn't matter if it's crushed or not. And I'm probably just going to add a few cherries too. one between the slices too. That'll do it. Now I'm going to take that off the heat, let it cool, and I am going to add just a little bit more pineapple to the outer edge of where my cherries are to make it look like they're encased in a slice as well. Because I got all this pineapple, I just well use it. Thank you. 
and that was uh, one pound, 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. Now, you know, like I said, most recipes call for sliced pineapple. I just happen to have in crushed pineapple on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. Now, to make my batter, I've got um, I've got about one and a half cups of flour. I'm going to put in a half cup of white sugar. I've already got it measured. I'm going to put in an egg. I'm going to put in about a quarter cup of vegetable oil. I just touched that hot burner, y'all. Didn't feel too good on my hand. That's about a quarter cup of all of vegetable oil. Two teaspoons of vanilla, which is basically one tablespoon. And instead of milk, I'm going to use my pineapple juice. I can put about a cup of it in there. Using the pineapple juice, it's going to give it more of the pineapple flavor to your cake, which I like better. And, you know, you got your pineapple juice already anyway, so why not use it? Put just a tiny bit more of the juice in there. about a cup of juice is what you're going to end up adding to it. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just stirring. And I've got an electric mixer, but I just, most of the time I don't even get it out. I'm so used to doing everything by hand. Now you get that thoroughly combined. I'm just going to put a tad of salt. Not much. <laughs> just a pinch. This is self-rising flour, so I don't usually use add baking soda, baking powder. It's already in there. Now, we're going to bring our mixture back over to the heat, turn it on, and I want it on low, and I've got to find my tin pan.
like I say, I always like to distribute my heat evenly. So I've got a just a pie pan that I flattened that I put right on my burner and put my pan on it. It helps distribute the, the heat. Now, that's on like a medium heat so far. Turn it down just a little bit like to medium low. And to keep my pineapple and stuff from moving around, I'm just gonna gradually pour some of this on by the spoonful because I don't want my cherries or my pineapple to move. Don't want to just dump it all in there at one time because it'll shift all that pineapple and the cherries to one side of the pan. a little bit more flour this time than I did before. So it may rise up a little bit more than it did the first time I made it. And you might ask, well, what are you going to do with the rest of that pineapple juice? Well, I'll show you at the end. <laughs> Gonna cover it. Let it heat up and we're gonna cook it for about 30, 35 minutes, something like that. And I'm hoping I didn't put so much flour in there it's gonna rise up and stick to the lid. <laughs> I may have. I may have put too much in there this time. <laughs> today. Spam risk. I'm not answering phones for spam risk. Ugh. Just this just a tiny bit. Just don't need to be looking at the wall, do you? gonna wait and do this the next time I went over to my son's house and cook this and, and take it over there to his house but oh well I guess I can make another one the next time I go over there yeah my grass is getting a little tall in the yard so I got to do something with that And I got something in the mail yesterday that I was really taken back by. It was amendments to the rules and regulations of our subdivision. And I can see where some people want to change things. I mean, that's okay. But, you know, if you want to enforce the fact that you want people not to have a, a dirt driveway, vote on that one topic. If you want the minimum size of a site-built house to be 1,200 feet, vote on that individually. Don't put it in an amendment 
that covers about 50 different topics and then expect you to vote yes or no on all of it. Because if you vote yes to one thing, you're voting yes to all the rest. If you vote no, you're voting no to all the rest. That's not right. You can't vote that way. So naturally, I mark my ballot no. Because there's some issues that they stated in there that they wanted amended that I don't agree with. Like the minimum size of a house has to be 1,200 feet. No, I don't agree with that. My house is 830 or 840 square feet, and sometimes I think that's too big for me. They also want it so you can't put in a mobile home or a manufactured home out here anymore. It's got to be a site-built home of 1,200 square feet. I don't agree with that. Now, if my house was to burn down, they give me 90 days to replace it with another mobile home this size or bigger, and I can put in a mobile home in that case. But now, if I wanted to get this one out of here and put in a brand new one, I can't do it if I vote yes to that. So I don't agree to that, no. I don't think people should be limited to have to put in a 1,200 square foot home and that it has to be a site built home. They also want you to, to vote yes or no to the fact no rocks in your yard. It's got to be grass, decorative grass, or something to that nature. I don't agree with that. There's a lot of people in a lot of these subdivisions that have rock in their yard. I mean, they had truckloads of just the white, pure white rock put down in their yard, and they don't have grass or weeds growing. It's just all white rock, and I think it looks nice. I don't, I kind of would like that in my yard, but then again, I don't want it in my yard because I'm afraid that it would make it even hotter if you have your yard covered in rocks than it is the way it is now. I mean, I don't know, but looks like those rocks would retain heat and cause your yard to be a lot hotter with the sun shining on it. Yeah, so there's, there's things in there that I would vote yes to, but then there's things that I would vote no to. So I can't vote yes and then say yes to about 40 or 50 other do different topics. You can't vote that way. There's too many different things that you're voting on that you may not want to agree with or you may not want to amend, but yet if you vote yes or no, you're voting yes or no to all of it. You can't vote that way, so I voted no. I don't know how many other people will vote no, and I think all these people that have just moved in, that have built all these brick homes and put down concrete driveways, and most of them have laid in grass, but a lot of them don't like it now since they've done that because they've got to keep the yard watered, which is almost impossible in this Texas heat. They have to keep it mowed. So a lot of them wish now they didn't even have grass. So I don't know. There's a lot of them that want everybody to do the way they're doing, the people that have just moved in. And that's not right. I've lived here since 19... 78, the end of 1978, or the beginning of 1979, in this, on this lot, and I don't want to change and do all that. I mean, I've got nice rock put down in my, under my carport for my carport pad. I don't want to have to go in there and dig all the rock out and put in concrete. Uh, if they want to pay for it, sure, fine. I'll, I'll agree for them to do that. But they want three, four thousand dollars to put a concrete pad down, unless you can do it yourself. And can you see me out there doing a, a concrete pad under my carport by myself? I don't see that. So, yeah, if you want to vote on all those separate issues 
you've got to break it down and vote on each individual thing. You can't combine it as a big lump package, 40, 50 different items, and say yes or no to all of it. But that's, it's impossible, and I can't do it, and I will not do it. Just what I thought, it's coming up to the top, but maybe it won't stick, hopefully. But it's been in there for about 10 minutes, so we got another 20, 25 minutes to go. Yeah, so that kind of worried me, you know. I. I don't know what people are trying to do. You just cannot vote yes or no to that many items all in one package deal. Or I'm not going to vote that way. I refuse to vote that way. I'll just say no to all of it. They're doing the same thing they did with the vote dock. They didn't vote, do you want to do away with your fishing pier and replace it with a boat dock? They voted whether or not you wanted to have a boat dock put in or not. Well, I voted yes to that. They have needed a boat dock for many years, but they needed over next to the boat ramp, one of those floating boat docks. So what do they do? They're t they tear the railing down on our fishing pier. They rebuild the fishing pier, but they turn it into a boat dock. So now we have no fishing pier, but we got a boat dock. That's crazy. I didn't vote for that. They said, well, you voted for a, a, boat, a, a boat dock. I said, yeah, I voted for a boat dock to be put in, but I did not vote for them to do away with my fishing pier. That's one reason I like living here is to have my fishing pier. So from now on, I'm voting no to everything because they don't make it clear to what you're voting yes or no to. Just like that, I voted yes to a, a boat dock but they didn't tell you that un underlining issue was to replace the fishing pier with a boat dock. That wasn't voted on. It just said, do you want a, a boat dock? So no, I'm voting no to all of it. They work it so they can accomplish what they want to accomplish, and you think you're, you've got a hand in voting on it when you really don't. Just like the package that you got to vote yes or no to. And it, they tell you to read it carefully. I read every single page of that thing, and it was like 12, 14 pages long that included everything that they wanted to amend. And at the end of it, you got a voting ballot. Yes, you vote yes or no. But you're voting yes or no to all of it. Not just one item, it's all of it. So, yeah, I vote no. And I probably shouldn't have included this in my video, but... You know, hey, I couldn't help it. And yeah, it is sticking a little bit. I put a little bit too much flour. So you may want to cut back on the flour. Not put quite as much flour as I did. But I think it'll still be all right. Some of it may stick to my lid when it's cooking, but I think the rest of it will be okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I mentioned that. I didn't want to put that in my video, but that's just some of the hazards of life, I guess. Dealing with associations. I mean, it's good. It's, a, it's good in a way, and then it's bad in a way. We used to have a security guard that patrolled this whole subdivision. So if you had a problem, you knew who to call. We don't have a security guard out here now. And there's not supposed to be fireworks being shot off in the subdivision, but yet every 4th of July, every major holiday, guess what? There's fireworks going off everywhere. <laughs> and there's so many people down at the uh, fishing pier, well not the fishing pier now, the boat dock, and the park area, you can't get in or out. There's so many cars parked there because they go down there to watch the fireworks across the lake. And they also shoot off fireworks in the parking lot. 
So if somebody had a major issue where they had to call an ambulance to anyone, they would not be able to even get the ambulance into the parking lot. They'd have to walk in. I've got so I don't even go down there anymore. Used to, I went down there and I'd watch the fireworks across the lake on the 4th of July because I could sit on the, the, the lake bank, watch the fireworks, but I could also see the boat parade, as they call it. When the boats dock over where they shoot the fireworks off, after they finish, all these boats have lights that light up all over the boat, and they'll get in line, and they come all around the lake, and they'll come right by where I'm sitting and go down past me, I guess to go where they live. And it, I call it the boat parade, which is kind of neat because you see all these different boats with all these lights lit up on it. So it's kind of neat. But I stopped going down there for that reason. There's just so many people. You get down there, you can't get out. And some people will take their grills down there, set them up on the lake bank, grill out dinner while they're waiting for their fireworks. And... You know, I don't blame them for doing that, but it's just so many people that went go down there, and a lot of them are not even don't even live here, which is wrong. They're they're not supposed to even be be in this development without a sticker on their car, unless they're visiting someone. And there's people that go fishing down there all the time, like this one gentleman. I asked him if he was catching anything because I was leaving. Oh yeah, he said I, I caught one or two a week ago when I was here. He said, I don't live here, but I've got friends that I know that live here. And they said I could come fishing. Well, no, he's wrong. He can't go fishing. He can if that property owner is with him. But he was by himself. And he didn't live here. And he was down there fishing. Well, anybody could come in and say, well, I live here. So they told me I could fish and go fish. But that's not the way the rules have been set up. Just like when we used to have the swimming pool, a guest could come in and swim if they knew someone that lived here, but that property owner had to be down there at the same time. They couldn't just come in and sign in on a property owner and say, well, I'm their guest, and go swimming. The property owner had to be there. It's starting to look good, but it is running over. But yeah, so many things have changed since I've lived here, during the time that I've lived here. It was a lot different when we had a security guard. People didn't get away with as much stuff as they get away with now. Like partying all night, oh my God. And there's several people mentioned it in the meetings that they didn't like the fact that they had to, they were forced to attend an all night concert when they didn't want to be there because maybe their neighbor had a band set up in the yard and they were playing music to two or three in the morning. Well, the response to them was, well, call, call the city cops, have them come out. Well, there is a, a, a noise ordinance in Comanche Harbor. Uh, there's n noise ordinance in Hood County. There's the noise ordinance all over this whole county. Indian Harbor, Port Sakal, Western Hills, uh, all these places. No loud music past 12 midnight on a Sunday night and 1 a.m. on a Friday night. It's never enforced. They don't have a security to enforce it, so they tell you to call the cops. And we don't really want to call cops on our neighbors, you know, it's better to have a security guard that can go over there and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to tone it down after a certain time. You've got neighbors. And I was having to listen to this music back when I was working, and I worked weekends. I had to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to work. And if I was up all night because my neighbors were playing loud music, it was not fun having to get up that Saturday or Sunday morning to have to go to work. So, But oh well, I said I wasn't going to do that, didn't I? <laughs> And here I am talking about it. Now 
what I'm going to do if I can get my spray. I'm going to pour some juice and let it soak in a minute. See, that's why I saved the juice. I'm going to let that soak in. And this is, a, I have to admit, it is a little bit different way than what I did the first one that I, I cooked. Isn't that pretty, y'all? <laughs> and see, it didn't matter that I didn't have the sliced pineapple. I went ahead and used the um, crushed pineapple. in the pan and we're going to brown it on that other side just a tiny bit to make sure we've got it cooked. Put the lid on it, wash out my, and I didn't get my other light turned on. But you only leave it in there maybe another 10 minutes and let it brown a little bit on that side. The, other, the first one that I did a month or two ago, I did not make it quite as thick. I made it a thinner cake. So I didn't use as much flour, so I really didn't have to turn it over. But this one, not only to get it brown on the underside, I wanted to turn it over, brown it on the other side. That ensures that it's going to be done all the way through. I wanted to put that little bit of juice on it to make sure it's moist. And I have been craving something sweet, so why not the pineapple upside down cake? <laughs> I can always freeze part of it. I don't have to eat it all. Don't have to eat it all at one time.
just liking to stay on top of things, get some things washed up while things were cooking. So I don't have such a mess over here. Lemonade's good. And when I make my lemonade, usually I make it in this. It's a two liter pitcher. Yeah, two liters. I usually put about three quarter cup white sugar. And then I put a little bit of hot water in it to dissolve the sugar. And then I fill it the rest of the way up to the red mark up there with water, cold water, to cool it off. And then I add about a half a cup of lemon juice. It's right here. Pure lemon juice. Lemon concentrate. About a half a cup usually does it. And if I'm in a pinch, and if, I, if I've got a package of lemonade Kool-Aid handy, I'll use the lemonade Kool-Aid. And sometimes I even add the lemon juice in with that too, so it makes it even better. <sighs> See how long we've been on here. and that should be done. I mean, it looks good, doesn't it? How is that looking? And we didn't use um, sliced pineapple. It's crushed pineapple. It's just as good, though. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to pour the rest of this little bit of pineapple juice right all over the top of it and let it soak down in it. going to be good because <laughs> I like for that pineapple juice to soak up in the cake makes it good makes it moist too oh another day another day so many things I want to do, so many things I want to get done in the garden, and I just, I can't get it all done. <laughs> you know, it's just too much. It's like I need to be going in ten directions at one time. But the lady did request that I make a pineapple upside down cake, so I'm making another one. The way I make it on the top of the stove instead of putting it in the oven. Now you can use that same recipe Put it in a 12 inch cast iron pan instead of the frying pan that I've got it in. And then preheat your oven to 350 and bake it for about 30 to 40 minutes in your oven and it does the same thing. 
So it's up to you. I just don't like heating the, the kitchen up, running the oven. I mean, the exhaust fan does pull a lot of the heat out, but still in the summertime, it gets awfully hot in the kitchen when you run the oven. And to me, it's kind of crazy to run the AC unit against the stove, you know, against the oven. Because the oven's heating up, the AC unit's trying to cool it down, and it's a battle. So I'd rather not do that. Now, if it's winter time and I needed to heat my house a little warmer, I'd be putting it in the oven and I'd crank the oven up. That helps heat the house, but right now it's better just to put it in the frying pan. And I could have put that in the 12 inch. I just put it in this one and I'm not sure if this is an 11 inch pan. I don't remember. I have to look at the bottom of it. <laughs> But it's close to the size of my 12 inch frying pan, cast iron one. So you could use that. supposed to let it cool. I don't know if I can get it out without letting it cool, so I'm going to let it cool. I don't want to break it apart. So there y'all go. That is my Pineapple upside down cake made with crushed pineapple instead of sliced pineapple. And I just don't know if it's going to come out of there like this. I don't want to break it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I actually got it out. But it's sideways. i got to slide it over a little. There you go. It smells really good. At least it didn't break in a million pieces when I got it out of the pan. Don't that look good? I'm going to let it cool down some before I cut it. Because I don't want to eat it as hot like it is. But it started to crack over there when I tried to get it out. But I managed to do it, y'all. I managed to get it out of the pan without splitting it wide open. But don't that look good? I mean, see, so you can use crushed pineapple for your pineapple upside down cake, or you can use the um, slice. The slice looks better at the top, but, but you can use your crushed pineapple just as well as the um, sliced pineapple. And the pineapple cakes that my grandmother used to make and my mom used to make had the pineapple all over the top of the cake. It had it in the uh, filling between the layers. They put pineapple and icing, and then they put the uh, icing and then the pineapple all over the top, which was a really good cake. But there y'all go, pineapple upside down cake cooked in a skillet. And like I said, cook it for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, I cooked mine for about 35, counting me turning it and everything. It was about 35 minutes. And if you prefer to put it in the oven, use the same recipe. Preheat your oven to 350 and cook it, bake it in your oven, in your cast iron pan if you want to. I mean, you do the same recipe and just put it in your cast iron pan and put it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes or whenever the toothpick comes out clean. And you got a pineapple upside down cake, y'all. Can't do no better than that. Let's see if it's cool enough I can cut a piece off.
I ain't gonna put it back up here on the stand. Go ahead and cut it. <laughs> Let y'all see it after it's cut. If I don't drop the camera in the meantime. already tell you that is going to be something good. It's sticking to the knife. <laughs> but look at that. Look how good it looks. Still piping hot. And it's so moist. Mm. Mm. That is good cake, y'all. Fix you a stovetop pineapple upside down cake. Or like I said, use the same recipe. Put it in your oven and cook it for 30 to 40 minutes and you've got a good cake. So with that, I'm going to wish y'all a good day. Please like, share, and subscribe to my videos. Y'all have a blessed day and I'll see y'all my next video. Bye now.